Hello and welcome to Winging It. So I'm back with part 5 of my series, taking a look at the maths behind Wingspan. And in this part 5, we are going to be taking a look at the end of round goals. Now, there's not a huge amount uh, to discuss really for the end of round goals. There's only a little bit of maths involved. So this will be a bit of a shorter video. But I do often see some miscalculations, misunderstandings, misinterpretations of the numbers around end of round goals. So I thought it'd be worth covering this in a video and hopefully just clearing a few things up. So first of all, we're going to take a look at the possible combinations for end of round goals in the base game. So at the start of the game, you'll randomly choose four end of round goals. And in the base game, there's 16 possible end of round goals you can get. Um, but these come from eight end of round tiles, which are double sided. So there are going to be certain combinations which aren't possible. So for example, the eggs in the forest and birds in the forest, they're the same tile. So you're not going to be getting both of those in the same game. So for those of you who play the physical version of Wingspan, this is going to be painfully obvious. Uh, but I know a lot of players whose only experience of Wingspan is through the digital version. And this is not really something that's covered there. Um, so this might be news to some of you, but... Uh, yeah, just something to bear in mind that while there are 16 possible end of round goals, there are going to be some where you can't get both of them in the same game. Um, that said, there are still over a thousand different possible combinations for end of round goals. And for me, you know, I think this is part of what makes Wingspan feel fresh and new every time you play it. You know, you're going to have to play over a thousand games before you're going to expect to start seeing the same end of round goal combinations come up again. And that's a lot of games. Now, the general strategy for Wingspan, in the base game at least, is around egg laying. And from these end of round tiles, you'll see that, you know, these end of round goals are absolutely no exception to that. So 12 of the possible 16 options are based on eggs. Four of the eight tiles have eggs on both sides, and the other four have eggs on one side and birds on the other. So there's only one combination of end of round tiles, which does not relate to egg laying in any way and like I said there's over a thousand combinations so uh, you're almost guaranteed really to get at least one uh, end of round goal that is related to eggs. Now I'll just quickly show up a table which goes through the kind of rough probabilities for the number of end of round goals related to eggs and yeah as you'll see the chances of getting zero you know you look at 0.1% and really your most common scenario is to get three out of four which I think makes sense. You know, like I said, there's 16 possible uh, end of round goals and 12 of them are related to eggs. So kind of three and four, I think you'd expect three. Um, but really, you know, certainly at least two, uh, you see that only 3% of the time you're only going to get one end of round goal related to eggs. So uh, absolutely, you know, in most scenarios, a heavy egg laying strategy is going to work very well with the end of round goals. Now, the slightly more interesting aspect of the end of round goals is the point scoring. So I'm going to mostly look at the green side of the end of round goal board here, um, just because it's the more competitive side. So you, know, you are directly competing with the other players to try and score points here. And there is the other side of the end of round goal board, which is the blue side. And in this case, you score points regardless of, of what your opponents are doing. You're just trying to uh, work towards the end of round goals kind of on your own terms and yeah, try and get those maximum five points. But like I said, we're mostly going to look at the green side because I think that's the most common side that people use. Uh, and certainly on the tournaments Discord, we exclusively use this for our online games. Now, one thing you'll notice is that obviously the end of round goals are going to be worth more later in the game than earlier in the game. So that last end of round goal, you get seven points of winning versus four points for that first round. Uh, but actually, I think what a lot of people don't appreciate is that you still get more points for coming in second and third. And really the key kind of point to notice is that there's always a three point difference between first and second and a one point difference between second and third. And I think in particular, if you're playing 1v1, really all of the end of round goals are effectively worth the same number of points. So this might seem quite counterintuitive at first glance. Like I said, these later rounds kind of look like they're worth more points. So you might think that it's worth spending more time and energy trying to target these later ones to get more points 
but like I said, you get more points for coming in second as well. So um, particularly in a 1v1 game where you're just directly competing with a single opponent, all the end of round goals are effectively going to be worth the same for you. I think this is really the key takeaway. Um, you know, Don't think about the points you're scoring here, but think about the points you are gaining or losing relative to your opponent. Now, another important point to consider, I think particularly in a 1v1 game, is there is always the possibility that you're going to tie an end of round goal. And I think this is another element that is often misunderstood. You know, how do you separate out the points when you're tying an end of round goal? So I'll put together the following table, which summarizes for each round of the game, how many points do you get if you win, tie, or lose the end of round? So for that first one, just as an example, obviously we know from the board you get four points for winning and one point for losing. Uh, but if two players tie in that end of round goal, then you combine the winner and loser points and split them and then round down. So in this case, you'd get four plus one, which is five, divide by two and round down, you get two points. And really, I think this kind of highlights uh, the point I was talking about before, where all the end of round goals are effectively going to be worth the same. So you'll see in each case, you progressively get one point more for each round. But obviously, you know, you'll get one point more but your opponent's also going to get one point more. So that's effectively going to cancel out. Now, what we can do is take this information and you know, look at how many end of round goals you win throughout the whole game and see how many points that you're going to gain or lose relative to your opponent. So as we said before, we know that each win of an end of round goal is going to be worth three more points compared to your opponent and every loss is going to be worth three fewer points. So looking at this table, uh, you'll see along the top, we've got the number of rounds one. So this goes between 0 and 4. And any that are shown as 0.5, I'm counting that as a tie. So for example, if you have 2.5, that means you won two rounds, lost one, and tied the other. Now there are some scenarios where there are multiple ties, but the logic still follows. Um, the point difference is still going to follow through the same, even if uh, the actual points that you're scoring and your opponent's scoring are going to be slightly different. But as I said, I think this really highlights the kind of point scoring difference that you're going to get. And this is really what you should have in mind. So obviously in the middle of this table, where both players are winning two rounds, that point difference is going to be zero. We know that, whether that's you know all four end of round goals being tied, maybe each player wins one and ties the other two, or each player is going to win two and lose two. You're both going to score the same number of points. What you can then see is if you shift either to the left where you've lost or tied at another end of round goal, or if you shift to the right where you've won instead of tying or tied instead of losing, you'll see that in each case it's going to be worth those three more points. Like I said, this is really the key takeaway, bearing in mind that every end of round goal, if you can win it instead of tying, you get three more points. If you can tie it instead of losing, you also get three more points. And if you can win instead of losing, that's going to compound and you'll get six points more. Really, this is kind of a useful thing to have in mind, I think, especially late in each round, because that's really where your key decision is going to be. You know, do I try and compete for this end of round goal? How many points am I going to score? You know, is it worth playing a bird or laying eggs? You can really take these additional points gained or lost into account when you're deciding what the play is to maximize your points. Really, I think as well, this highlights the influence that end of round goals have in a 1v1 setting. You know, from one extreme to the other, if you lose all the end of round goals, that's 12 points lost to your opponent. And if you win all of them, that's 12 points gained to your opponent. So there's potentially a 24 point swing here, um, just in terms of winning versus losing all the end of round goals. And in my experience, at least 24 points is more than enough to decide any game. So you know, really, you can't afford to be sleeping on these end of round goals because if you're potentially giving up that many points to your opponent, it's very difficult to overcome that through the other point scoring means. Now, I will touch briefly on games with more than two players. And I think in these situations, the end of round goals behave quite differently. Really, I think you can afford to pay a little bit less attention to them because there's always a chance that uh, the other players in the game are going to be taking points off each other. You know, as we just looked at it, a 1v1 game, losing all of those end of round goals can be an absolute killer and really is hard to fight back from. But I think in even a three player game, but certainly a four or five player game, 
I think you can afford to lose all the end of round goals and still be in a strong position. Um, it's all going to depend really on how much the other players are fighting for these end of round goals and taking points off each other. Another point to consider is that in a 1v1 game, it's always worth getting that second place. You know, it's always worth trying to qualify for that end of round goal, whether it's having an egg in a nest or a bird in a habitat or anything like that. You know, if you don't qualify for the end of round goal, you're going to get zero points. And I think particularly in those later rounds where second place is going to get you three or four points, you're really going to be missing out on points if you don't qualify there. Uh, you know, conversely, when you are looking at three, four, five player games, it's not the end of the world to not qualify. You know, there are some cases where you might qualify for the end of round goal, but still not have enough to get that third place. And you're still going to score zero. So, you know, was it worth spending an extra turn or making a slightly inefficient play to qualify for an end of round goal if you still scored zero points? Probably not. And this is really something that's always worth considering, in my opinion. So that's all I was intending on covering on the end of round goals. Like I said, this was always going to be a bit of a shorter video. Um, but hopefully there's a few kind of key takeaways in there, just looking at how many points you're scoring relative to your opponent and using this information to help guide better decision making, particularly later in the game. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, this is part of a series of videos. So if you haven't seen the other parts, I definitely recommend checking those out. Um, but otherwise, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.